509 most ever in a game in Falcons history. And what a night to do it when Matt Ryan, who led them to the Super Bowl, was in the building going into the ring of honor. Cool moment for the Falcons down in the A. Damian Woody is with us now as well. And it's funny, you just read um, his, his numbers, Kirk Cousins' yes. numbers. I literally brought my phone with me, Woody, to, to make sure that I didn't do disservice here to, to Kirk Cousins because he did. He, was, he threw the ball 58 times, 42 completions, 509 <laughs> yards. The numbers are just a little bit north of absurd. What else did you see from him in this game? Yeah, we saw shades of Kirk Cousins from last year when he was on a record-setting pace for over 5,000 yards. I mean, listen, he's not he's a statue in the pocket, but he was able to dissect and sling the ball all over that Buccaneers defense. And we got guys that are, that are running around making, uh, making yards after the catch. Uh, Kirk Cousins was just massive in his, in his ball placement. And, you know, Cordero Hodge pulled a Pete Alonzo in the night of all-time finishes tonight between the baseball and football game. This is a great night for sports. It is a great night for sports, and I actually loved how the Falcons fans and the Falcons team, they were celebrating almost a little bit like they were going to go pop some champagnes in the locker room. Um, you know, the, the Falcons, this is a team that spent a lot of money on their defense in the offseason. A lot of focus was on their defense. Obviously, they also they, they drafted a quarterback. They brought in Kirk Cousins, and now they have a guy that seems to be able to win games for them down the stretch. What did you see from them in the closing seconds, the, the, the clock management to put them into position to kick that field goal with one skinny little second on the clock? Yeah, you know what? The game of football is all about situational football. And what you saw out of Kirk Cousins, obviously, is him being masterful in that, in that time. You know, no timeouts. You got to run the two-minute drill. And you go out there, you get a couple chunk plays. And then, obviously, you go make that completion with 12 seconds left on the clock. And you're able to spike it in that moment in time to give yourself one second. And then, obviously, kick the game-time field goal. Just a masterful job by Kirk Cousins in that situation. Now let's give some credit to Young Wei for coming up a big, not just one week, uh, but two weeks in a row. On the other side of this, the Bucks had their chances. The Bucks had the opportunity in the fourth quarter, and then obviously the defense didn't step up there at the end. Um, what could they have done differently to, to prevent this from happening for the, the Falcons? Yeah, I mean, listen, at the end of the game, they were, they were in a position to really uh, run their four-minute offense and ice the game. Obviously, you got the big, the big fumble by Bucky Irvin, uh, the rookie running back, which obviously um, was, was a, a you know a, a deciding one of the deciding factors in this game. So you know when you have the game in hand and you got to be able to take uh, take care of the football because you know the defense is going to be looking to uh, punch the ball out, and that's exactly what the Atlanta Falcons did. All right, Woody, stand by. 66 points later, this game was over. Falcons win it in overtime. For reaction now, new on Sports Center, the tight end Kyle Pitts. Kyle, what did we just witness? A barn burn at the end of the execution. What did you see on that play? <laughs> I didn't even, I knew Red has man-on-man -man matchup. He got it, he won it, he, and he took the yak and he scored. Yeah, what did that feel like to be able to celebrate that down there? I mean, it's amazing. You know, obviously, overtime, you know, you got to kick it in the gear and, you know, pay attention to your details. So, it was important for us to do that, and we did. How is tonight an example of what this offense can look like? Just persistence and just being able to just keep our head down and just keep grinding. Each play, each drive, each quarter, and not finish it out to the to the goal to zero. What was the key to getting you involved tonight a little more? Just, you know, just the offense just going. Just, you know, let, letting the ball find its way. Yeah. And what did Kirk Cousins show tonight? Yeah, he's one of those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Okay, Woody, I want to ask you about this Falcons team and, and sort of their ceiling because they are three and two. Yes, they lost to the Steelers, but they also lost to the Chiefs in a very close game. What is this team ceiling? Like, how good can they be considering the way they've been playing this early in the season? Yeah, clearly tonight you, you saw, like, offensively, this team can, can score with anyone. Obviously, Kirk Cousins continues to get better and better and better. And obviously, tonight he threw for a franchise record 509 yards. They have weapons 
all over the field on the offensive side of the ball. I think the one thing you have to talk about as it relates to Atlanta and their defense is the inability to get after the quarterback and pressure the quarterback. That's something that hopefully as the season you know moves along that they'll get better at if they want to truly compete and be one of these top teams in the NFC conference. Obviously this division has been terribly interesting the last couple of years but maybe not for particularly good reasons. It's not been the best record in the NFL to make the playoffs out of this division but this year you've got the Falcons at three and two the Bucks are three and two the Saints are good they're in contention when it's all said and done who do you see coming out of this division. I still I like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I know this was a tough loss for, for Tampa Bay, but I love the way Baker Mayfield is playing. You know, obviously he's he's playing like a top ten quarterback in this league. And this defense, I think you know the way Todd Bowles calls his defense, they really heat up the quarterback. They were missing some some guys on that side of the ball. I think when it's all said and done, they'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Real quick before we let you go, obviously Mike Evans. Uh, we saw him give away the ball to the fan tonight, his 100th career touchdown. How does he continue to impact that Bucks team? <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, he's one of the, he's one of the best and most uh, underrated receivers uh, of this generation. You talk about a model of consistency. I mean, this guy, it seems like every year he's cranking out a thousand yards and double digit touchdowns. And so when when Baker Mayfield needs to play, he can obviously look at Mike Evans because he's that he's that big time receiver for that for that team. Do you think? He knew it was his 100th touchdown when he gave the ball away? No. <laughs> I don't think so. I, think I mean, so listen, I, it, it, we, we see that. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, we saw him give away the, the one ball for most points scored in franchise, I think, in franchise history. And now the, the, the you know, the, the ball for 100, 100 touchdowns or whatever it is, I, I, you don't give away those type of balls. But here, and Eves was like, dude, you got to give the ball back if you're a fan. I'd be willing to bet the fan doesn't know. Probably not. Sad either. No. So no one, no one is the wiser. We'll just like gloss over it, and when he gets 101, he'll get that <laughs> one. That's Damian Woody with us on SportsCenter. We'll see you again real soon.